The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. Well, I really can get home. It's been a pleasure to see you because we haven't seen you for a good couple of years, hasn't it? Oh, which is really odd because we had oh, loads so of gigs strange. booked in and then all of a sudden it all went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did, but hopefully um, it will go right again. It will, future. it will. The, the light is in, in the very distant but near future. Hope so, really hope so. Um, we wanted to also first of all chat about your uh, your brand new single, um, which is coming up really soon. Um, crying Game? Yes, it is a crying game. Yes, yeah. it's um, a bit of a dance funky hit. It's great. And you've had, um, listening to it made me think how much of a change in sound um, you have had over the last year or so. Tell us a bit about that and what inspired it. I think obviously like when the first lockdown hit um you know like we were just talking when we were off air there we were saying about your abundance of time and what you're going to do with this time and how you're going to you know make it productive what you do and obviously as a music tutor but also as a musician you're on the go all the time so it was nice to have a bit of time to just sit and think about right what am I going to be writing about this year what is it I want to portray am I still evolving my sound you know let's see what comes about and really this song just it's a little bit wayward of my normal stuff. Um, uh, there's so much more stuff coming out this year as well. Like right, literally, right. I've written written a whole album, so yeah, it's, it's it's on its way, and it's all in it's all on the on the what I call the sausage making machine. It's all in its. <laughs> um, but uh, this one is kind of like a. It was supposed to be a summer hit. Actually, I wrote it over a year ago now. It's supposed to be released oh, last wow. summer, but we put the delay on the release because obviously with lockdown and all this kind of stuff, people can't really wind down their windows and go for a drive, you know, with this pumping out of their speakers whilst that's all going on. And they probably wouldn't want to because they're not feeling in the best of mood. So we, <laughs> we've we kind of delayed it till this year, just before Valentine's Day, because it has a very strong connection to just relationships and, you know, having troubles and trying to get over them and, and all that kind of thing. So we thought it was quite an, an apt time to release the single. Because when I heard it for the first time, um, my immediate reaction was more of like an ooh, just because it was so kind of unexpected to your previous sound. Um, and it kind of reminds me how we sometimes hear songs that are so upbeat, but actually almost like the more upbeat they are, the sadder they Sad are. they are. Is there some yeah. evidence for that? No. Yeah, the juxtaposition of that is is completely true. I mean, you know, it's it's always a it's always an interesting thing when a musician is able to give you like lyrics that are just, you know, really deep and really cutting and really sad and with a with a beat behind it because that's what an amazing job that is. In one sense you feel elation because of the beat and the rhythm in the other sense if you really tune into the lyrics you're like this is really quite dark but actually, you know, it's really really catchy and I think I think this has a has an air of that, not just because of the lyrics and the beat, but in, but the way it's sung as well. It's it's got, it's got quite a haunting feel to the to the way in which it's delivered. So it it kind of gives it like an overall kind of this this dark, but you want to just tap your foot to it, feel to it. What was it that inspired you um, to write the song? I think it's just yeah with with the stresses and strains of lockdown and you know uh, actually I wrote the song before lockdown but the stresses and strains of a lockdown and the stresses of strains of just everyday life and you know we were talking about being grateful for people that you've got and things yeah. that you've got and you know and, and just really taking stock of the small stuff and not taking it for granted and we all hit times in our lives where we have you know sticking points with people that are important in our lives whether it be a relationship whether it be a family member whether it be a friend um, and last year was all about that, really. And, and towards the end of last, uh, the, towards the, the end of the year before. So where are we now? 21, 2019. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I have to think, because we've been in here for so long. It's like we've been in a hamster yeah. wheel. I can't tell um, when in the next. <laughs> I know, I don't know what day it is, to be honest. I just get the times and I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to be doing this at this time. Um, and so, yeah, so it's really about that. And it's just about, you know, um, trying to overcome those things and and making the right decisions for you ultimately because only you can make yourself happy that's really what the song is about yeah wow um again just kind of the, that juxtaposition of the dancey vibes versus the heartbreak um i think just cuts deep for so many people 100 um, yeah. so how the app sessions works normally is um we get artists we're giving away our secrets a little bit but we get artists to send in a couple of videos in advance and you sent us an amazing cover of robin's dancing on my own which i think due to the current climate has become more and more 
um, appropriate, to be honest. <laughs> there um, are many times, Emma, I've danced around, <laughs> I've danced around my living room my own this last year, let me tell you. Just wanna dance all night. I'm so messed up the way I lie. Still letters and broken bottles, and I'm spinning. The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. Um, what songs have got you through the last few months? Oh God, I've been listening to all sorts. I've had a bit of Matt Corby on my on my playlist. I've had a bit of, um, oh, I've got to think now, Alanis Morissette. I've had a bit of, oh, everything. You you name it, I've had it on there. I've got um, some old school Michael Bolton on there. I've got some modern day teaks dance stuff. I've got, you know, whatever. Because I do a lot of walking in lockdown, I'm literally walking like 15 kilometers a day every day 
to just get out and meditate and just have some time to myself and just you know that really is my thinking and my creative time because if I didn't go I wouldn't get out at all and that's really not good for mental health anyway um but yeah oh everything everything that you can't that it's (laughs) eclectic beyond belief Um, I also wanted to ask you about your second cover that you did for us, um, which was an amazing dramatic take on that Queens of the Stone Age track, No One Knows. Um, And I heard it and I was like, where have I heard this song before? And then it took me a couple of seconds and I was like, oh yeah. Um, What inspired you to make such a twist on that? I think because it's such an epic song and obviously yeah. everyone knows Dave Grohl for the drumming on that song because it's just phenomenal and yeah. if you listen to the original it is phenomenal. Again, it's got a really upbeat, really upbeat rhythm but if you listen to the lyrics they're quite dark so instead of making it upbeat and dark, I tried to make it dark and dark <laughs> which is kind of what I've done with the piano and the vocals and so yeah. it's quite haunting again it's quite, it's very slowed down you know, it's very um it's it's quite a self-indulgent really I suppose in a way but it's not designed to be like a single it's designed to be like something that you can just put on easy listening you know have a listen to it and and go I know what that song is what is it I know that song what is it which is exactly what happened to me I was like oh. <laughs> what is that song yeah I have to say I'm not really a Queens of the Stone Age fan that that oh, came yeah. from came from my husband Adam who was like you know you need to do you need to do an, um you need to cover this song and I was like I can't do this he was like yes you can this would be amazing if you slow it down so there you go <laughs> um you also released a single just before I think we went into lockdown I did at the start of last year um, and I just wanted to know what that was like for you obviously having no idea what was around the corner and also how did that affect the way that you promoted it and things that you would yeah done. I mean that song was set for release on the 21st of March and I think what was it the 19th of March we went into lockdown so by the time it had all come to fruition and we were having these daily talks of right now you know people can work from home and now now the whole country is locked down by the 19th I think the release date was too too it was too late to stop basically and um and we just had to manage it so we just basically pushed the socials we put it out there I mean it was right at the beginning of lockdown so it it wasn't affected too much because people were just finding their feet with what they could do in the day what they're allowed to do so people were still listening and you know again that song's very dramatic it's a it's it's very it's more about you know darkness and light and I wrote that song in the vein of a, of a James Bond song it's very much like a James Bond anthem if you listen to it with all the big instruments and so yeah I mean it was difficult because uh that song was being released around the time of my gig at Chapel Camden and then my gig at the Pheasantry in Mayfair yeah. and unfortunately they didn't they didn't happen so it just kind of it didn't fall on its butt a little bit it just kind of went into the ether and you know at least I released some something last year is the way I look at it and I will revisit that song again at some point it's a great track so ah thank you (laughs) (laughs) um obviously like you you spoke briefly about having to walk a lot and having a lot of time um to yourself and I was just wondering um because of that did that put pressure on where you're at creatively and did you feel the need to almost be like even more productive yeah you do that whole thing oh I don't know I did this whole thing at the beginning of lockdown and right I need to do all my emails to all record producers and agents and managers and and I did I did do that I emailed hundreds and hundreds and of course what you realize then is that no one's working because they're all on furlough so they're not going to answer your email anyway so probably not the best idea but I still felt good doing it um and yeah for the first few months I was a bit like right I must do this and I must write three songs in a week and I must you know I've got all this time but actually I as time has gone on I've kind of relaxed into it so all the new stuff has just come as and when it's come and I think we've touched on this before in interviews Emma when we talk about like forcing uh forcing creativity really probably 96 to 98 percent of the time gives you a bad product because you you just not you don't feel free enough to write what's coming to you. you feel like you are being pushed to write something that is completely you know, maybe not where you want the song to go. And instead of stepping away from it and just having a look at it and thinking, right, I need to go away from this for a little while, you just put down whatever. And the shortcomings later on, you you know, you realise that it's actually probably not good enough to put out. So you just have to be patient with yourself. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. I can write a song in two hours. It can take me four weeks to write a song. It just depends what the song is and it depends what the aim is, what I'm trying to get out of it. Oh 
The Alpha Sessions. Just thinking about you and the amount that you've done during this period of time and with the new website and the amazing new sound and the new tracking. I would say um read on the website that you've got A and E P coming soon. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. soonish. So 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 those four tracks are written. Um three of them are produced, so there's one more to produce. 
we were obviously in the flow of doing videos, but we can't really do that at the minute. So it's all very sort of, I mean, musicians still can work, which is a great thing. And, and it, it is work at the end of the day, but you know, it's very restricted what you can do, where you can go, how many people you can have with you and all the rest of it. So we're just trying to see how long this is all going to last for. And then obviously that production line will be straight back into getting the next video done and getting the next single done. I mean, my sound is not a whole lot different with the new stuff to, um, to like my still melodic sound but it's definitely a lot bigger it's a lot bigger it's a lot more powerful it's a lot more catchier it, it's just as a musician you you do that you just you keep evolving I don't care what anyone says you, you even if you've got your sound you still keep evolving throughout everything that you're doing definitely no you have to it's part of the growing process I guess. it is and you're always growing for, for to the day that you stop writing you you know you because no two things are the same that you write so yeah. there there might be some kind of similarities but there'll be a lot of polarities as well you know it, it, it's just the way it is let's assume that things aren't how they are um <laughs> and you got a phone call tomorrow and you were told that you could have your first gig back from unprecedented times um where do you think you would want it to be oh oh have i got can i can it be anywhere anywhere royal albert hall Oof. okay for sure or or i think it's called the eventim now isn't it hammersmith apollo oh yeah okay nice. that kind of venue that kind yeah. of venue because the new stuff i mean I always write my stuff at the keys. So everything is is written stripped back. So even crying a crying game that you've got there with the beat and everything. Yeah. Um, there is an acoustic version of that. Where there's a little clip I put out last week of it, just a little bit of it, but that that is how it's written. So all those songs that you know, um, the good thing with a venue like that is you can DI into a board and get it sounding how it sounds on the radio edit, but you can also really dim the lights down get the acoustic sessions going and make it sound amazing and obviously Royal that before you've got to have an orchestra haven't you there really for that 100% big sound hmm. um, when you play that um, it's a crying game live um, is the idea that it would be stripped back or is the idea that it would be like full sound yeah so it depends again on the venue and and the sound of the set we are looking to try and do a local festival here in september called loud fest so i'm based in hampshire so um and they have three stages so one is the main stage with the you know i guess all the big bands go then you've got like a like an intermediary and then you've got the full split stage and so we're kind of in the stages of <clears throat> deciding what what we're going to do but to be honest, I think, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you should, if you're going to do an acoustic set, you need to do a full acoustic set and don't, but I don't, I think you should mix it up a little bit. So it just depends what the guys think, what the band thinks. I mean, if the song goes down really well, we'd probably do the radio edit, but I could always start it with a little bit of an acoustic lead in, you know, I'm one for sort of trying to mix it up a little bit just so that it's not so boring and not the same as the radio edit. No, definitely. Um, so you're working on loads of um, upcoming stuff and if people want to find out more about you, where can they go, what can they do? Yeah, so they can go to my website, which is www.kerrygoodhine.com. It's a brand new website. It's only been up for about two and a half weeks now. It's so it's all been it. redone. Yeah, thank you. It's all been rebranded. Um, obviously it's all based heavily at the moment, focus point around the new single, but there are all lots, all my other stuff is on there too and new stuff that's coming. Um, there's also, you know, uh, you can download songs from there and subscribe and which, you know, if people want to, that would be great subscribe and keep in touch with what I'm doing where I'm going all the rest of it give ideas as well I'm always up for that from fans socials um at Kerry Goodhind at Kerry Goodhind Music you can look at both the both the tags for there and Facebook's the same Kerry Goodhind Music and the same for Twitter as well so I'm very I'm very contactable these days <laughs> <laughs> virtually virtually anyway yeah virtually of course <laughs> Um, thank you so much for uh, giving up the time uh, to speak to us. Thank you for um, having me. Online. And uh, looking forward to hearing that new single again and um, for it to be out into the world. <laughs> out into the ether. Thank you, yes. Emma. Sometimes you keep pushing